Hi guys, welcome back. We are starting a new unit today, and the topic of this unit is how the United States in the mid-20th century transformed from a world power to a superpower. And this happened in the context of two of the most important events of the 20th century, that's World War II and the Cold War. So we're going to begin that story with this lesson today, and we're going to start off with a video excerpt. It's about 10 minutes. I want you to see if you can guess as you watch this the five W's. Who do you see in this video? What is going on? Where is this happening? When is this happening? And probably most important of all, why is this happening? All right, did anybody figure it out? What is going on in this clip? Well, the who is Japan is attacking the United States at a naval base called Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. The date was December 7th, 1941, a date that President Roosevelt called a day that shall live in infamy. And he said this because Japan attacked us without any warning or any formal declaration of war. Now the why to this story is going to take a little more investigation, which we're going to do in the course of this lesson. So I'd like you to turn to the top of the reading on Google Classroom. And then we're going to jump into this. So I'll see you over there. America enters World War II. World War II begins. On September 1st, 1939, Europeans watched in horror as Adolf Hitler's armies invaded Poland. Only a year earlier, pursuing a policy of appeasement, Britain's Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain had declared Europe would enjoy peace in our time. Now Britain and France found themselves once again at war with Nazi Germany. A second world war had begun. So in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to answer question two, which is why did a second world war begin? And to do that, I'm going to give you guys a quick little review from global history. What were the steps that led up to a second world war? You'll recall that at the end of World War I, the great powers signed a Treaty of Versailles. The treaty was extremely punitive. It required Germany to sign a guilt clause claiming responsibility for the entire war and required Germany pay the Allies $33 billion, which was a crippling amount of money. Not only that, Germany lost its territories and has severe restrictions placed on its military. So the German people deeply resented the Treaty of Versailles. And in the early 1930s, Adolf Hitler rose to power, vowing to avenge Germany for its treatment. Meanwhile, in Italy, we have the rise of another fascist regime under Benito Mussolini. And in Asia, Japan begins to build its own empire, beginning with its invasion of Manchuria in 1931 and later mainland China. In 1936, in direct violation of the Treaty of Versailles, Germany begins remilitarizing the Rhineland. And what did the League of Nations do at that point? absolutely nothing. And the reason is that France and England did not want to risk another war with Germany. Two years later, Germany annexes its neighbor, Austria. In September of 1938, Hitler announced that he intends to seize a part of Czechoslovakia called the Sudetenland, which contained valuable raw materials for its war machine. The Czech government appeals to France and Britain to act in its defense. Britain sent their Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain to meet with Hitler, and they came up with an agreement called the Munich Pact, which basically said in return for Hitler's promise not to expand any further, Hitler would be allowed to annex the Sudetenland. Now, there are a lot of names for that deal, such as the Munich Betrayal, but the most important word you should remember is appeasement, which basically means giving a bully what he wants and hoping he won't want any more. Did Hitler stop here? Not at all. Two months later, he went ahead and annexed the rest of Czechoslovakia. Now, one thing England and France were counting on was that the Soviet Union might prevent Germany from attempting to expand eastward any farther into Poland, but Hitler signed a secret non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union in 1939, which gave him free reign to go ahead and invade Poland. In September 1939, Hitler invades Poland, and at this point, Britain and France declare war on Germany. Now, you may recall... During World War I, most of the war had been fought in France. Well, during World War II, in less than a year, Germany successfully invaded and defeated France, which left only Britain to defend the old alliance. And in 1940, during the Battle of Britain, the German Air Force bombed the British islands relentlessly and was preparing to launch a full-scale invasion. So before we go any further, I'd like you to summarize in question two, why did we have a second world war? 
Now, throughout all of what was going on in Europe in the 1930s, the United States was watching and facing the same question it did during World War I, which is, should we get involved in all of this? And for most Americans, the answer was pretty simple, hell no. I'd like you guys to read the next couple sections of this reading on your own, down through where it says Lend-Lease Act. You can stop right before it says Atlantic Charter and answer questions three and four. So I'd like to review a couple points here. First off, Americans were not happy with the outcome of World War I. 116,000 Americans had died in that war, and for what? The Treaty of Versailles was a disaster, Europe was still a mess, and a lot of Americans said, why should we send our young men over there to fight and die in another one of these wars? But this time around, many Americans were determined to do successfully what we failed to do in World War I, which was to stay neutral. We passed a series of laws called the Neutrality Acts with the goal of not getting sucked into another one of these things. However, not every American agreed with that point of view, and I'm going to show you guys a cartoon right now. This is actually a cartoon drawn by Dr. Seuss. He's the same guy who drew the cat in the hat. Now, if we were in class, I would have you guys tell me what's going on here, but I'm going to run through some of the details. You've got that little bird in the background, which obviously represents Adolf Hitler, and he's been making the rounds. He's hit Czechoslovakia, Greece, Norway, Holland, France, Poland, and he's working on England. There's an animal in the middle with a USA hat on, which represents the United States. And he says, ho-hum, when he's finished pecking down that last tree, he'll quite likely be tired. So Dr. Seuss is suggesting here, hey, there's no way we're going to be able to stay neutral. Adolf Hitler has big plans, and those plans are going to include, sooner or later, the United States of America. To think that we can sit this one out, it's a fantasy. Now, one person who did not support American neutrality was the President of the United States. Franklin Roosevelt was very concerned about what was going on in Europe. He believed that sooner or later we were going to have to contend with Adolf Hitler and that we actively needed to support our allies. So at his urging, Congress began to pass laws allowing the United States to support those countries. And by the time we get to 1941, we have a law called the Lend-Lease Act, which basically allowed us to give military equipment to any country fighting the Axis powers. So Germany knew that the United States was siding with Britain and all of this. And by the time we get to the fall of 1941, in fact, Germany was already shooting down American ships in the Atlantic Ocean. It was perhaps only a matter of time before we found ourselves in a full-scale war with Germany. But before we could get to that point, guess what happened? On December 7, 1941, Japan attacked U.S. forces at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Which brings us back to where we started this lesson. I'm going to ask you guys to read the last section of the reading on your own, and I'd like you to answer question seven. Why did Japan attack the United States in 1941? So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. When we come back here next time, we're going to talk about the impact of World War II at home, particularly on certain groups like women and African Americans. Uh, I hope you guys are doing your best to stay safe, and I will see you soon.